Hey folks, it's Professor Fiore back again for some more exciting Python programming. We're going to pick up our discussion on sequences this time, looking at tuples and lists. So last time we looked at strings. And the idea was a string is nothing more than a whole bunch of individual characters. So it's a sequence of characters, right? Letters, numerals, punctuation, and so forth. Uh, tuples and lists, this is a little bit more open-ended. Uh, for example, we can have sequences of numbers. So I can have something like, oh, maybe a set of values. Oh, like yay. Okay. So we've got what, one, two, three, four, five uh, individual values here. So we can treat this similarly to the way we looked at strings. In other words, I can do something like this. I can say, uh, let me see a one. See if you remember, what should that print out? If that was a string, what should that print out? Let's see if you're right. Yep, 34. Remember it starts from zero. This is location zero, one, two, three, four. What do you, what do you think would happen if, if we did this? Is there a location five, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. What do you think it's going to do? Eh, index out of range. It's smart enough to know that there's nothing after this. All right, so this is a runtime error. There's nothing wrong with the code per se, so you're not getting a syntax error, right? It's legal code, but the interpretation of it is such that you wind up with an error. Uh, you can do the other things we were talking about with the strings. So you can do something like this. Right, you get the very last one. Minus one, minus two would get you the 77. If we did um, one colon four, what should we get? Yeah, 34, 6.5, uh, excuse me, 65.277. Notice that when this prints out, it doesn't just print out three numbers, right? It puts them in, in uh, parentheses with commas. Because what you're asking for is a sub-sequence. Literally, this thing is called a tuple, right? Short for multiple. Think That's a way to think of it, all right? So... A chunk of a tuple is itself a tuple, just like a chunk of a string is itself a string. So when we print out one of them, right, when I ask for, um, you know, A minus 1 or A1, you know, I just get a 34. I just get a 98.02. But when I ask for this slice, I'm asking for locations or indices 1, 2, and 3, that itself is a tuple. So it gets printed out as a tuple. Now, the important thing to remember about tuples is that tuples are immutable. What does that mean? It means you can't change them. You can't go back in and once they're created, you can't go back in and change them. Like you can't say this is illegal. I'm going to put this in just to show you. You can't say that... Uh, a2 gets the value of you know, 45.6. Right? When we try to run this, we're going to get an error. Right? Tuple object does not support item assignment because it's immutable. It can't be changed. So when it comes to numbers, these things are great for constants. You know, if you had a database of components, for example, this is perfect because you, you're not going to go in and change you know, the, the component database. It, it is what it is. I mean, you might add new components, but an individual component is an individual component. You know, if you have a particular model of a transistor, it has certain characteristics, and that's the end of it. We're not going to go in and change those. Um, or physical constants, you know, like pi, right? You don't get to vote on what the value of pi is. Even though many years ago, I think it was Ohio, tried to legislate the value of pi. 
then maybe science should have a little bit more sway. Science and math. In any case, you could look at look that up. It's a fun fact. Okay. So what the heck then is a list? A list is basically the same thing as a tuple, except it is mutable. You can change things. In other words, if I made a um, version of this that was a list, I'll make it B. How's that? The way we would do that is we would change from parentheses to square brackets. So it's how it's defined that tells you whether it's a string, right? If it's, if it's using single quotes, double quotes, or a, a triple quoted string, it's a string, right? You got quotes in there, it's a string. If, um, if you've defined it with parentheses, then it's a tuple. If you've defined it with square brackets, then it's a list. So as a list, this is entirely legal. You could do that, right? Tell you what, let's just, let's print out B just to kind of prove the point here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprint the value of B after we do that. Okay, so here's the original, 1234, 65.2, 77.98.02. And notice when it prints out, it prints it out with square brackets rather than parentheses. Then I do my assignment, location 0, location 1, location 2. So the 65.2 gets written over by 45.6, and there it is. All right, so you can think of a list as sort of a, a dynamic version of a tuple. And you might say, well, you know, why do I have both? Well, because there are cases where we don't want values to be overwritten accidentally. And there are cases where, you know, we want the ability to update things. Um, so you can just go in and change this. This also gives you the ability to sort of stretch, to, to um, uh, expand So you can you can use um, what's called a member function. In this case, something called append. I'll tell you what I'll do instead of overwriting. Let's get rid of this line. So we have our original. So b dot append basically means to the end of this. In other words, after the ninety eight point zero two, stick on forty five point six. All right. So there's the original. Here's our new one with forty five point six on it. So we have that option. We can also do things like sort it. This is another member function. So notice what it did here. Right? We sorted from low to high, right? 12, 34, 45.6, 65.2, 77, 98.02. So it's ordering them. You can have it order in the reverse direction as well. We're going to take a uh, closer look at this in the future. There's a nice, there's a nice um, lab exercise, the very last one, where we use a list to, to read values from a file, and we can do a little statistical analysis on them. Okay? All right, so uh, as an example, I've got uh, a little program for you, and it's going to involve some... Uh, resistor color coding, a nice electrical example for you. Are you ready? Here comes. All right, so here's our nice little program. What this does is it takes a resistor value and gives you back the color code for it, right? The standard color code. Uh, there are some limitations on this. This only works for uh, resistors that have three color bands. In other words, two precision digits. And the resistor value has to be more than 10 ohms. But beyond that, you know, it works fine. So the first thing we're going to do is create a, a uh, tuple colors. Now notice, this is actually a sequence of sequences. It's a tuple, but the tuple contains, instead of numbers like in the preceding example, it contains strings. And we already know that strings are sequences. So this is, in fact, um, a sequence of sequences. And although we're not really going to look at it here, we don't have a need to do this, 
if you want to, this is something nice to play with. You can um, do something like this. In other words, you can you can grab like the second thing in here, which would be red. Uh, actually, three in this case won't work. Uh, but for red, you know, it's zero one. This is actually the E in red. Right? It's a fun thing to play around with. In any case, so we define that, right? So we have the colors in the standard uh, resistor color code, black, brown, red, orange, all the way up through white. And then what we do is we ask the user to enter a resistor value. In our case, it has to be at least 10 ohms. We turn that into a floating point value. And the reason I'm going to turn this into a float is because I want the input statement to recognize um, when we do the float conversion, entering values in scientific notation. In other words, so we can say 4.7 E3 for a 4700 ohm resistor. So we assign that to a variable called our original, our orig. And then I have this variable called mult, which is a multiplier. This is actually going to tell us what the band is, the third band. We're going to set that to zero. And then I'm going to get an integer version of this our original. Okay, just call it R. Okay, so the fun occurs in this loop right here. We check R, this integer value, to see if it's more than 100. If it is, we divide it by 10, and I increment this multiplier. What this is going to do is determine what that number of zeros is, in other words, what the third band is. So as an example, we throw in 330 ohms. Is it greater than or equal to 100? Yes, it is. Okay, divide it by 10. That's 33. We've done one division, so bump up the multiplier by 1. So it's 0 plus 1, which is 1. Come back around. Is it still greater than or equal to 100? No, it's 33. We're done. So we come down here. We do a floor divide on R. In other words, no fractional piece, right? This is an integer with a floor divide. So that 33 is... Div is Divided by 10, which, you know, with a floating point divide would give you 3.3, but in this case it's just 3. That's digit 1. Then we do a mod 10 on this. In other words, what's the remainder, right? So 10 goes into 33 three times with 3 left over. So the 3 left over is digit 2. Now I use digit 1 and digit 2 as the indices into the color sequence, into the tuple. So um, 0, 1, 2, 3, All right? So that's going to give me an orange for this, an orange for this, and then mult was 1, because we did 1 divide by 10. So that's going to give me brown, All right? Orange, orange, brown. If I had a 4.7K, right, 4,700, we'd go through here, divide by 10, that would give us 470, mult would be 1, it's still bigger than 100, so do it again. So the 470 gets turned into a 47, mult goes to 2. Now we're um, outside the while loop, right? We're, we're not greater than or equal to 100, so we come down here. We do the floor divide again, which gives us the 4 from the 47. The mod gives us the 7 from the 47. So colors 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is yellow, and color 7 is violet. And of course, the mult on that was uh, 2, 0, 1, 2, there's our red. All right, give it a shot. So let's say we have um, 120 ohms. All right, brown, red, brown, perfect. Try it again. Let's do um, 5.6 E3, 5.6 K. Or 5,600, we get green, blue, red. Let's do another one. Why not? We can. So let's say it's a uh, 47K. Tell you what, since we already did an E3, let's just put it down as uh, 47,000 like that. There you go. Yellow, violet, orange. Beautiful. Okay. So these things are certainly useful. And again, here we're going to use a tuple because we're never going to change these. We don't want to accidentally overwrite these colors. These things are fixed. We're never going to change them. Okay? All right. See you next time.